What's up on Power Ass Crew? Check it out. We got winch power by switch. No breakers, no fuses, all controlled by rocker switch. Very cool. Let's show you how it's done. Couple of winch installed and functional, but there's one little caveat. What do you do for safety? Safety meaning you got your wires that goes to the winch. Or some big old rascals. Look at here. Going through the grill right here, going around, comes right here, goes back to the battery. I don't have it connected at the moment because I connected the winch when I needed it, but we've got a solution for that. But here's the problem. You've got this big old huge cable. Oftentimes people want to put in a uh, some kind of breaker, you know, like a circuit breaker. In the event, say if you're cruising down the road and you get a big old deer comes through, of course with my stinger bumper, the deer's going to have a problem. But if you get a deer come through and it hits your grill, and this wire happens to cut against your grill right here and get into it. Now you've got direct connection, a direct short, from this big huge cable to your battery. That's not good. So what do you do? You install a continuous duty contactor. That's what you do. This, you can switch on and off as needed, turn, effectively turn your witch on and off. So therefore, if you ever get a kind of front end collision, your cable going through your grill and you get a direct short, as long as you got this bad boy turned off, you're okay. Let's put it in. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty good size contraption. So where are we going to put it? Look along the firewall. You got stuff on the other side of that firewall you don't want to drill into, or it's hard to get to the bolts. Up here, self-tappers. Nah, you don't want to do that because why? It's all in the way of your battery. You don't want to have to remove this thing every time you take your battery out. And down over in here is a good option because you can know different places down here. You can mount it. I've got my onboard air set up right here, so that's kind of taking up room. Uh, so, hmm, down here, so I'm trying to avoid getting a whole lot of stuff down in this area, because when I get down here working, I kind of want to keep it open, easy access. So, boo-boo, what are we going to do? I'm going to put that way down inside there. Right there's my holes, I drilled about big enough to accommodate a quarter 20 bolt, and what I did is set my contactor up like this, knowing about where I want it height-wise on this side there, using this character line here as a reference it's going to sit like this right here on the inside of course on the other side of the sheet metal and i'll just put bolts in place then run my cable into it and it'll be all tucked and hidden back inside the fender i want to roll it i'm going to set i'm going to mount it like that with my contacts going toward the engine so in the event i wish to get a side hit the fender wouldn't be pushed into the contacts of the contactor now there might be a slight chance that i may have to put some washers underneath this to shim it outward a little bit to get away from this. I know a lot of you will be able to mount it right up in this neck of the woods here. I've got my storage tube here, which has an extra rear dry shaft and some tools up in here. So I'm leaving that put. And of course my pressure switch and all this stuff from onboard air, I'm not moving any of that. So for me, I like the idea of putting it right down there out of the way. Another thing you're going to do is figure out what kind of switch you're going to run. You've got your regular toggle switches, rocker switch, these new multi-panel switches or multi-switches, whatever you'll call them. Uh, the rest of it's in the house. When you take push this one or whichever, it activates an internal relay and turns on whatever accessory you sign to that particular port. And then you put these little decals on. This is going to be a video for a later day. Or you can get your winch control switches. It actually has winch on them. Winch power, winch in and out. Don't get these confused. Winch power is simply that. On, off, on, off two position it's either on or it's off okay but then you got your winch controller switch these are actually a on off on switch but they're momentary so you push it in you got to hold it you turn loose of it it goes back to off push it in on turn it loose off and so on so on so you know you push this side if you want to feed out push this side when you want to feed in later on i'll show you guys how to wire these inside your cab because that's not going to be a today thing because I am out of places to put switches. So I've got this right here going on. This is where I hit this, then I turn on my air, onboard air here, or I start my Jeep right here. What my plan is to later put this in, but it's gonna be right here. But for right now, this switch right here activates these two right here. If this switch is off, I got no power to either one of these two here. So what I can do for my winch on this contactor I'm putting in, I can feed off the switched side of this right here, so when I push it in, I get 12 volts, goes out to the contactor, and my winch is ready to rot. 
So I'm gonna tap off that for right now. There's gonna be someone out there that's gonna totally confuse them because I'm gonna use that switch to activate that contactor. People, it doesn't matter what kind of switch you use. You just need a regular on off switch. It doesn't matter. Toggle switch, rocker switch, whatever. It does not matter. So don't overcomplicate it. You just need to figure out what kind of switch you want to use. Toggle, rocker, uh, multi, whatever. This is a later video. Figure out what kind of switch you want to use. Figure out where you want it. And just wire it to the relay. So I'll show you guys how to do that here in just a little bit. Now let's start the wiring portion of it. I'm going to break all this right here loose, get it off the top of this, because I'm going to run it down low for it to come around to the fender here, then come up to the battery. So tie the winch power cable to the fender right here. I'm like, I ain't got no place to go. I mean, I can knock out that Christmas tree right here, make a big loop around it. But I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Get your wire tie. I'm going to feed it from the tire side of the fender in. Go around the wire, feed it back in through the fender, and pull. Uh, of course, you can't see it. I'll show you guys on the other side of the tire here in just a moment. Right there's a wire tie where I looped it through. Now, you can put a washer right there or something to keep it from going through that hole, but the head of that zip tie is big enough that it won't go through. So, now we feed it back up through here. Pull it tight and just work with it till you get snugged up. Push that through. Now we got the head of zip type on that. And we'll come over here and look. See right there? She snug down good. Now just make sure you cut your tail off on the other side. So I'm taking my winch power cable out of the control box. It goes in right here behind the grill. Notice I've got zip tied to the radius part of the grill, but not touching the edge of this. Zip tied there and right there. So therefore it maintains this position, not getting to the radiator or get to the edge of this. Yeah, it exits out right here. You've got right here where your loom for your headlight goes in. So you wire tie all that together. You've got your little hook right here if you still got it. But if you don't, let me show you a little trick. Right there. You're like, how is that done? I'll insert the video right here. Right here. So I've got it zip tied to the fender. That's kind of odd looking. I've really got it not zip tied to anything. I'll show you how it's done. And then once you finish that, we need to establish a cable length. And I'm going to cut my power cable back up in here somewhere. Figure out exactly where I need to cut it. And we'll put ends on it. Then run that up to the battery. Yep. So, be right back. So, I took my power wire, tucked it in behind the harness there. Went back to where I'm going to bolt it into. And kind of calculate I need to cut right there is where I'm going to put my end here. To bolt onto the contactor so i'm gonna cut that and crimp on some new ends give you a little hint see those big cutters when you're cutting big cable like this these things are absolutely priceless i keep these with me in my junkyard bag as well so if i need to cut a battery cable to get something out or whatever or a big wiring harness to pull an xj fuse block i can cut all the wires at one time these things are nice i'll link them up below watch how easy Ta -da. Love them. Now to mark your insulation, just take your lug, butt it up against like right here on this edge here, and take your marker and just like right there is where we need to cut it. Pull that insulation off to put the lug on. Take your razor knife and score your line around it. Then score your line straight like right here, split it open. Then you can take your insulation and just come around like that right there. It's gonna work. All right, let me get my big crampers. Also, heat shrink, can't forget that. Too small, that'll work probably. Also, you should put your heat shrink on before you strip your cable to make life a little easier. And that is not gonna fit. These kits right here are super handy. Yeah, 
here we go then that now our crimpers are these big lug crimpers what you want to do is size this up to which set of dies you need and I need to go smaller you take to push that in well actually from this position I'll push that up because these got this little spring loaded right there. You push that in, you can turn the dies. So turn the dies. Six, one lot. Go with four. That's what we get. Match up your numbers. That's going four, six right there. Yeah, it's going to be too tight. Just like two, four. Cripping with that. So get your cable ready. Make sure you ain't got no strays. Open this up. Put it in there. Come down slowly. Hold your cable in place. Get my handle over here where I get to it. Push down the handle. That didn't work. Let me go one more tighter. Let me go four and six. We'll crimp it good then. Put it back in place where the other marks are. Like so. Alright, get a wire fed back in. Alright. Handle back over here. We're cramped. Come over here, get this side. Not exactly the right size lug for this wire, to be honest with you. And I know somebody's gonna call me out on that, but hey. But it's crimped on good. Now we take our heat shrink, slide it up, and do its thing. Now I got my little butane torch here. This thing right here is pretty cool. Using as a torch for heat shrink, but you can put these little tips like this on there for soldering. Pretty, pretty handy. So I'll put your heat shrink in place. Flip that lever up. All shrunk up. Because of that right there, I'm going to go ahead and put one more layer over there right there because maybe over time that might wear through or something. So, just precautionary. This stuff's cheap. It's all shrunk up. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah. Now that we've got the high voltage side pretty much ready to go, let's check the low voltage. Low voltage is going to be the smaller post, high voltage across here. One of these posts goes to the winch, this one goes to the battery positive. Now being that it's just passing through voltage, it doesn't matter which one's which, so it's not a big deal. You know, if one goes here, one goes there, vice versa, whatever. Even you're switching, one of these is going to be positive, one of them is going to be negative. So we're just going to take my little alligator clips here, pop it on that one. And I don't know if the camera will pick up the sound or not. But if I tighten that down a little bit more so I can put clips on there. All right, here we go. That gun. So we're going to take this post here, touch it on the negative side of the battery. Then I'll take this, touch it on the positive side. You'll hear this thing right here clamp down. So I feel raindrops. Touch that to negative. This is on the positive. And the darn thing come off again. I'm taking that right there off so I'll stay. Raindrops are falling on my head. So now we'll put that on there like that. Then we'll touch that to the negative post. Come over here. Be real quiet. You might be able to hear it. Did you hear it? Let me move the camera maybe a little bit closer. 
Yeah, buddy, see if this works. Touch that to the negative side again. Take my wire feed over here. Touch the positive side. Listen real close. You can see those washers moving from the contactor slamming shut. So, we know that it doesn't matter which one's positive, which one's negative. And I don't know if I'm going to get this finished or not because i got raindrops falling. So before I cram this thing down into the abyss, I'm going to go over real quick where I've got the connections. This one right here, going to the winch. This one right here, going to the battery. As you see right here. Yeah, I'll probably tie it on right there. Uh, short cable here, a little short wire coming off the bottom side of the uh, contactor. I know I said it doesn't matter, but here's why I did it. Coming off the bottom side here, you can take your chassis ground, come from here to the bracket here. And as you see right there, we'll run the bolt through. When I mount it, that will provide your ground to the contactor. So that'll provide your low side ground right there, low voltage side. Long wire here, goes inside the Jeep, goes to your switch, you turn it on, turn it off. So therefore, clamps or opens the contactor. Whenever you turn your switch on, it clamps the contactor. Therefore, your winch is hot and ready to go. Turn the switch off, it opens the contactor, and the winch is now safe in the event the uh, cable here shorts out somewhere. It's not going to cause a big catastrophic fire. So, I haven't got ready to quite yet, but it's getting close, so hustle, hustle. You can see right there, deep down inside the abyss. It's all mounted up and ready to go. Now, check this out. Listen real close. Get down here where you guys can hear it. Right here, all I'm doing is taking that hot wire, touching the battery post, hot side of the battery post. That's activating the winch, giving it power. And here we go. Turn it on. Doop. Got you set up on a tripod. Let's check it out. Got the winch controller all hooked up. It's all wrapped around my shackle. My winch rope's loose. I can take this thing out to the farm or string it all out and tighten up my rope. Definitely need to take that thing out there. But we got power. Sweet. Now some of you may be a little bit irritated at me because I show you guys how to hook it up to the power switch. The little rocker switch. Here's the deal. 99% of you out there is not going to have the same setup I've got. So just because I showed you how to set it on my little rocker switch, some of you will be confused because my wiring is not set up like you got. So I feel like that would probably would make the situation worse by showing you how to hook it up to my rockers. Now for those of you who do not want to wait for the wired winch controller video, Here's all you got to do. That one wire coming off the contactor that I was hooking to the battery, you know, I was touching it and it's making it clamp close and stuff. Take that one wire, run it to a toggle switch, rocker switch, whatever. And all you got to do is take that one wire coming off that contactor, go in one post of your switch, then the other post of your switch, run it to your fuse block. On your fuse block of your Jeep, there's going to be a post somewhere. You take your key, turn the key on. That's then uh, take your multimeter and check, hey, there, I got 12 volts right here. When you do that, you've got that 12 volts in keyed on position. It'll power up your switch, you turn your switch on, it'll send power to the contactor, clamp it shut, and you've got winch. Super easy. I do believe I have a video showing how to find um, full-time hot and keyed hot on the fuse block. If I do, I'll link it up so you guys can go check it out, okay? Cool. And another thing. Oftentimes, there's people out there who's wanting to put fuses on everything, and I 100% understand. So somebody's going to ask me, hey, Chuck, the switch you know, going out to the contactor from the inside of my Jeep, should I put a fuse on it? You can. Absolutely, you can. I put my little meter right here on it. I didn't get a video of that, but I, I did take a picture of it. I had my phone laying beside of me. It came out to 1.6 amps. So if you put an inline fuse in that switch, put a 5-amp fuse in it, you'll be good to go. So my next video is coming up is how to set the rocker switches up, both power switch and the in and out switch. Winch controller inside the cab. Very cool. Then the video after that will be the wireless setup. Now I'm going to keep it where I can run wired or wireless. In the event my remote goes bad, my wireless remote, if it goes bad, battery dies, whatever, I still got the wire control so I can you know, pull myself out of a bad situation because I do dumb stuff. I really do. So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, hit me with a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave some cool comments down below. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.